What's up, guys? Welcome back to the MLG Guild Wars 2 Invitational. I'm Syrif. I've got Blue with me. I've got Sean, Android Buell with me. Really, uh, this match keeps on getting better and better. The first game, we thought it couldn't get any better than that. The timer ending and just four point difference. Now we, did, we got a Lord kill. We got oh, just so much ridiculous stuff going on. Unfortunately, they did have a disconnect for a 4v5. We've got all the players back in the game here. Hopefully, they don't drop one more time. Uh, Sean, Blue, those last games, can this game get any better? Well, this map, we have some interesting stuff. We do have the two catapults on this map. We have yet to get uh, to, the, uh, to this map. We have yet to get to Kylo. And catapults are really known to play well with Mesmers and Thieves. And so Vanish and Hellsith, they're going to be able to take control of that catapult. Guts might be able to take control of his catapult. Um, I definitely think we're going to see some catapult play, and I'm interested to see how that works out. We've seen some really clutch maps, really good close games on Kylo before that. I'm interested as well to see how that interferes with the back cap, because I think that's going to be a huge factor in this game as well, like it was in the first game with Guts and Hellseth really just constantly moving back and forth between those side points, and even the middle point when the bulk of the enemies were concentrated on the side points. I'm really interested to see how the trebuchet may interfere with the, their plans, or if they're going to still try going for the side caps, even though this map, it's a little bit harder to do that on this map. Yeah, you know, some crucial elements of, the, of playing on this map, let's actually show them the map, because this is a really, really crucial element. One of those signature maps of Guild Wars 2 is Kylo, the Battle of Kylo. So if we open up sort of the features of this map, you'll notice that we have in a line straight down the center our, our capture points, and our secondary mechanic of this map are these trebuchets, or these catapults. And these things can hit pretty much anywhere on the map, and it's worth noting, this little chapel here can be destroyed by it, and you can shoot these uh, basically raining balls of death on your enemies into the midpoint, which is a gigantic kill box. And of course, everyone will be running in here to do sort some sort of capping and some sort of killing, and it's up to your trebuchet player to sort of uh, go against that. And also, trebuchets can hit at any point on the map. There's so much this debris here. Pretty much everything here is destructible. It allows you to give your team the ability to get from point A to point B faster if you do destroy debris and get from uh, place to place here. So we're gonna uh, let's no, noting this, noting the vertical. Look how high middle point is compared to the side points. You can see both sides from it. Knowing this, we're gonna be. It's gonna be interesting to see what sort of stuff Hellseth, the Mesmer, the Thieves on both teams, Guts, and of course uh, Vanish are gonna be able to pull off. Yeah, with that verticality in this game, you're gonna see some really cool portals from Hellseth. Uh, he can plant them right at the top of that tower, actually, and can teleport to it from any point in the map. And Guts and Vanish also have their teleport with their shortbow. They're able to really dart up around the map where some other classes, you know, do have to walk around, go up the ramps, and it takes a bit longer for them. Absolutely. Of course, guys, don't forget to win some gems. All you have to do is tweet hashtag MLG with hashtag denial or hashtag nonstop with who you think will win this match. Or we'll be choosing at random who gets gems. We've got so many gems to give away here tonight. And I think we're ready to jump in this game. We're going to tell the players to ready up. And we're just waiting on Guts and Conrad Quest to do so. But, the match starts yeah, soon. there it is. There they're going to they're gonna start. We're going to get into the split soon. Of course, the strategies on this map vary. You can have someone go straight for that trebuchet. You can have your team totally uh, a minute from your strategy. strategy. Yeah, I mean, sometimes they want that more consistent damage from a player. One thing to note is the trebuchet does around 8,000 damage. An Hold average character has about 16,000, 15,000, so it's a, almost half of your health. But it is dodgeable. You can dodge the trebuchet. So we do see Hellsith taking a red team's trebuchet. He's ready to put some shots in. Blue team doesn't have anyone on theirs. So uh, you're going to see the numbers advantage for blue in fights, but red team's going to have that damage advantage. But we do see actually Guts going straight for red team's trebuchet. They're going to try and knock it out and nullify all trebuchets from this game. That's, that's right, Sean. Hellseth is going to be pushed off this trebuchet right now. And of course, there's also a blue team raiding party over here on Windmill, which is red team's home point. So really, red team has to rotate right now and figure out where to best allocate their players. For Lena, though, able to keep Eppley off point for just a second, start capping it in his favor. And they do have one of their teammates up here. That is Denshi, who is, is back here up on mid. He's going to be using his longbow to get some shots in from afar. And that's that fire shot will allow him his teammate to get some might. But behind him, in comes someone from the blue team. I think that must have that must have been Gunson. Yes, it was. Let's check out what's going on. It looks like Red Team Denial actually cleaned up at their home point, able to get it in, and they'll start getting an income now. They're down about 15 points coming into the beginning of this game. 
Yeah, one thing to know is the midpoint. We do have the Guardians dueling. This map is actually well known for the Guardian duels. As in the mid clock tower, if you fall off one of the sites, you actually have to run completely around. You can't just jump right back up. Uh, so if you're able to knock them down, you get those ticks. And you can look right in the middle point and see how far points capture. If you're able to knock them down, you get more ticks. If you're able to knock them down again, you probably have a full cap. So Guardian duels on this map are definitely something to watch out for. Awesome. Um, also, something to note is that Helseth, he's so mobile on this map. He was just at the Red Treb, knocked someone in, and then came out and decided to take home uh, the home point for Blue Team, which is Mansion, and he's going to cap this, and no one else really has a capture point yet, Sean, and they're going to start pulling away with a lead in about uh, 20 seconds if they are on, if all points stay the way they currently are. Well, let's check out this yeah. mid-fight. If we go take in it. on Freylina. Yeah, Freylina, let's take a look. So we have that Guardian popping pretty much all the cooldowns. He's able to get the Empower off right there for that AoE heal, as well as the Might stack to make himself, as well as the rest of his team, do more damage. That's absolutely right. And you know, it would, it would be great, but he just is alone here in the midpoint. His, teammate very well, his teammates are very well spread out, but he does need some support here as he's dealing with Adira and Epoly in the mid. That's just so much contr uh, crowd control from the Guardian and okay. conditions that are just, you know, he, the, the Necro can actually target him better with the ability, the crowd control ability from the enemy Guardian, but he's able to stay alive here as the Guardian has kind of pulled off to deal with the pressure on their home point here at Mansion. Guts, though, coming in, trying to get Helseth down, trying to get a stomp in. Will it go through? No, Helseth does have that deception. He is stealth as well, so they're just trying to get uh, everyone up on the side of denial here at Mansion. Epley going for another stomp, and he'll get it, and it's just, it looks like Denshi is the only one here on Mansion for denial here. As they're coming back, they do have the lead 67 points to 41 in the favor of Denial. And over there in mid, you actually have Freylina slowly wearing down Just Adira. Like Freylina Guardians don't really have that high consistent damage, but with all their healing as well as their burning condition damage, usually in long drawn out fights they can apply pressure and that's what we're seeing right here. If Freylina is able to knock him off a couple more times, he should be able to get the full cap. That's right. Let's check out what's going on at Waterfall, though. We do have Conrad Quest camp at this point, able to stay up, but we do have uh, I Vanish You Wipe coming in, and Fluid's going to go in for the stomp if he doesn't get interrupted momentarily. It looks like he does. Let's go in for a closer view of the stomp as Conrad does get speared. There's Radom, though. He's coming in on Fluid, able to knock him off the point, and it looks like Denial will not be able to start capping this point just yet. Helseth comes in, though, and he's going to have the ability to support here, and Vanish is here as well, so it's going to be a 2v3 against Radom and Epoly. Uh, Sean, how do you see this? This fight going through. Well, you have the tanky members from Nonstop Nonsense here, but then you have the damage dealers from Denial. They're definitely going to be able to wear down Ray Doom pretty quick, even with all of Epoly's heals. Uh, they, the consistent damage from Ray Doom actually does take out Vanish, though. Yep, and it looks like Vanish is going to go down. We'll see if the res comes through or not. He's getting DPS, but we do have Denshi trying to get him up. Will he get up? Yes, Radium is going to be so low, and it looks like he's going to drop into that form as well. He will res, and off the rally, will will uh, Vanish get his vengeance? No. He's going to come uh, leave and come back momentarily. It looks like Radium's just now. Oh my god, Radium able to get up. Oh no, he's actually able to stay down as the, the Spirit of Nature renewal did not go through at the very last second, Sean. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we actually have Guts still fighting Freylina here. Freylina's been mid this whole entire game. And we've had people from Blue Team just cycling into that mid team. We, we had uh, Epley on there earlier, then we had Adira fighting, and now we have Guts. So three people have cycled through mid, just trying to stop Freylina from getting that full capture. Now that Freylina does have some backup though, gives them an opportunity to breathe a little, and they might be able to finally pressure this point to take it. Oh no, we do have over on the, we have Radom on the trebuchet, and that's just more pressure on Freylina, and he's not going to be able to cap it, but now Denial finally gets their home point. They'll start coming back. They do have, um, they do have the... The mansion point on the side of uh, nonstop nonsense and Freylina just he can't take this middle here with this much pressure. They need to send someone over to deal with Radium on the trebuchet and look at him. He's just going nuts on that midpoint. It's just shot after shot coming in and knocking Freylina back. And Freylina is so low. He needs some support from his teammates and his teammates are coming uh -oh. up right now. His shelter just came back off cooldown, so he should have been able to get that heal off right there. Helseth actually comes in just in time to get the revive on him, and he decides to take off to go breathe. He might go deal with Trebuchet, or try at least, but it looks like he's actually going to push towards Mansion instead. 
That's right. Now, Denial is about 30 points down from non-stop nonsense. Hellseth able to stay up and alive here, and I don't know exactly where the Tremacy shots are going. They aren't really pushing uh, anywhere uh, into the mid, and I think it's because here comes Vanish. He went to deal with Radom right there, and Radom is running away. I don't know if Vanish is deciding to stay, in, and nope, he's going to go straight for Mansion. He's going to be Sneaky Beaver here. Meanwhile, Epoly is trying to deal with Fluid on the middle, but Hellseth uses Portal to get out. He might use his Portal to get back in as well. Felita coming up to support and Denshi as well, so we have a total red aggressive move here on the middle point, and Hellseth is actually going to open up a portal here and allow him to bring some people back, and he's got a, a party to support him back on the windmill. Such a great portal play from Hellseth. Yeah, so we have him and Denshi trying to push mid. Epley, every time you see him in a fight, though, he's really good at supporting. Unfortunately, in that 3v2 right there, he wasn't able to keep Adira healed up enough, and they are going to get the stomp. Now he's got to hold this pressure off against three people, or Denial might finally get this mid capture point. That's right, Sean, but we will see Radom cycling in here along with the Ranger Conrad Quest. Epley gets stomped out, but Radom gets immediately back on the point. So the fight rages on for mid. It hasn't really been capped for either side yet in this game, and we're over halfway through the timer here, Sean, and it's still close. It's only about 20 points ahead for the side of Nonstop Nonsense, and really the ability for Denial to come back has been in their kills. Helseth and, uh, and company have been able to just get the kills they need Need. Not really secure points, but check this out. Fluid able to back cap while Adira is playing with a trebuchet and really keeping everyone busy in mid. Yeah, this game has been so close the entire game, and not just this one, but the last two matches that we saw as well. Both teams are really, really good at rotating. Both teams are good at staying alive. When someone goes down, usually they get right back up, and instead of staying there, they'll just bounce to another point. So we just see these rotating team fights. People really have to understand the matchups here as they're constantly doing small skirmishes with different comps. That's right, Sean. So we do see the Spirit of Nature Renewal coming out from nonstop nonsense just in case the trebuchets do get used or if anyone goes down real fast. But we will see a lot, a huge, massive fight where the thieves are over here on Mansion. Guts versus I Vanish, and Guts goes down. Vanish is very high. I don't see him not taking this kill here and securing that back cap for red. And they're pulling ahead very fast. They're 255 to 210, and there's no income for nonstop nonsense. Freelina is going to try and stop a, a, a stomp on Denshi, but Denshi does get stomped out here. So we're seeing the concentrated effort of nonstop nonsense here in the mid. Yeah, nonstop non nonsense may be focusing a little too hard on mid with red team's just side point dominance. We do have Redoom should be able to get Windmill pretty easier. But this is actually nonstop nonsense's strategy. We're used to them holding on to side points. Now that Denial switched it up, it's actually putting too much pressure on them and they're going to have to work something out to get back in the game. That's right. We did see Radom actually using his snare ability on the onto Fluid, keeping him off point, allowing him to decap, and that's going to be so crucial for him. But Adira is going to try and do the same thing over our mansion. He's being chased down, though, by uh, Vanish, and Guts is going to chase him down. So, oh, here comes Denshi, and there's going to be 2v2 here. Adira being targeted by Denshi. He's being stunned forever. He pops into that plague form, so he can have this ability to sort of leave and deal with everyone else. Here comes Conrad Quest, though. Vanish goes down, and the rest of Blue Team is coming in to support on Mansion. I don't like uh, Denchi's odds here, Sean, but here comes uh, Vanish is actually not dead yet. And Redoom actually on Windmill is demolishing Fluid. Fluid is actually forced to leave the point. Uh, he's trying to heal off the point and push back in. So we're going to have a pretty long drawn out fight if no one gets back up. So we have nonstop nonsense. They finally have a point. They do have Mansion. If they're able, or they do have Windmill. If they're able to get Mansion as well, it's going to give them that opportunity to come back in points against Denial. Check out what Helso's is doing though, he is trebbing that far point, but Guts comes up to try and deal with him. He may just burst down the trebuchet and destroy it. Helso realizes he's not being chased, he's going to try and go in on Guts. Vanish though, he's going to rotate back to the far point there. Yep, Guts is trying to get this trebuchet down. We'll try and show you that as he does so, but Freilina and Epoly going at it once again in the Blue mid as the Blue Team is going to start up. Yes, there's the trebuchet dying and, and Guts finally gets it. He's going to now pop back into the team fights and that's just going to be so strong and such a great strategy for NN. For Alina, though, I'm going to try and get the stomp off. Able to stomp through Adira, and he is going to start putting more pressure on Mansion with Vanish and Hellseth. Yeah, so midpoint, actually most of non-stop nonsense left midpoint to go pressure mid. They're back now, and it looks like they should be able to hold this as long as they're able to get the pressure on the right people. Now they're only 30 points behind, which is much better than the 100-point deficit that they had earlier. One thing to know is four minutes left on the timer, so we have about 10 and a half minutes already passed. Midpoint still has not been captured. 
It's 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 been pretty much 12ish minutes, uh, 11 minutes in the game. No one's captured mid. It's been that heavily contested. Check out Windmill though. Uh, it's worth noting that Radom and Denshi are going at it. Radom actually got knocked down and pushed away there. But both players pulling out their longbow, going for that fire shot. The uh, um, going into with the adrenaline skills there, and it looks like Radom just able to be st like st to be stunned way more than Denshi has been. And nonstop nonsense actually just lost Mansion right now, so that's going to be completely gone. Denshi's actually doing a really strong job of taking out Radom at Windmill, too. If Denshi's able to get him, get the cap on that, nonstop's going to have zero point income. The game has three minutes and 13 seconds left. If someone's able to cap mid in this point, too, that might be a clear victory. Absolutely. Eppoli, though, is very low. We're in with Eppoli right now as she's trying to stay alive. He just doesn't have any support. The Nile might actually get this if they stomp Eppoli out. The Wave of Light did not push back Hellseth, so he'll get stomped out. And the Nile might actually take this guts, though. He, if he gets on point, he'll be able to stop the cap. We'll have to see in the game. The scores are almost dead even. It's 340 to 338 from the side of NN. But if they get another kill on Guts, who is down in the mid, they might just do this. And there it is. Um, yeah, Guts does get stomped through. Red not able able to come through here, but who is on a treb? That's Adira, knowing that Red is, is concentrated here, getting trying to get Hellseth, trying to get Freylina, not quite able to do so with that last shot, but there, let's check out what's going on. Waterfall has advantage, is trying to get Radom last minute, trying to decap. There's just so much stuff going on here, Sean. Dude, so Red is almost about to capture mid. Conrad Quest comes last minute, is able to get the cap. They're now going to get the stomp on Freylina, but Hels is here, Denshi's here. They're going to have to be able to get them down as well. If Nonstop doesn't get some kills, if they don't get mid, uh, Denial's going to have this game. There's only two minutes left. It is definitely going to come down to the uh, time limit this time. Even if they do get kills, they have the Spirit of Nature to come out and deal with it. Freylina does go down here. Now Fluid is here. He's going to get some pushback on everyone, keeping them off point. And just, uh, every every little bit of capture point counts on that map. You can see that it is about divided. That That is your progress of capping the point here. And oh my god, looks like Mansion got decapped, but Guts is here with Vanish to try and fight over it. We'll have to see what goes on. Oh my god, there is no capture point coming in for Denial. They need to get this capture point back. They need to end this with kills or some way. As Vanish needs to get this down. There's a, a minute and 20 seconds left on the clock, Sean. We'll have to see what goes on as this continues. This is about to be over. Yeah, Fluid about to go down right now. If they're able to get the stomp on that, that's another five points. But he does have a little backup here as Denshi and Hellseth are both in the game. Radom has clear control of Windmill right now, so those points are set. And then over at Mansion, Vanish is going to be able to recap that as well. <laughs> this game, oh they're going to be able to get this point before it's able to catch up. So Fluid goes down in the mid, though. Everyone trying to stomp gets pushed back. He does come back. He cycles through. He has that resurrection off the spirits and off his teammates. Now let's go ahead and check out what else is going on. They're cycling out Fluid for the back points. They're cycling in Guts. A very wise decision. We'll see if what sort of goes on here. Freylina able to stay super, super dominant. They're about 12, 13 points ahead of the enemy team. But as I say this, though, Guts comes up on the trebuchet and Vanished realizes this. Guts is going to pop that Shadow Refuge, and this is just going to be a ridiculous matchup here. It's Thief on Thief, and now the Thief goes back to the, the Trebuchet there, and they're going to be pushing more uh, Treb shots on the mid, and this is just not going to... It's. I don't think that NN can do this in this last 15 seconds, Sean. Yeah, they need about 40 or 20 points to get in the lead. If they're able to get a whole bunch of kills from this Treb, people's endurance are low, they might be able to do it, but it looks like Denial might have this game. 12 points lead now with only 2 seconds left. And, and we have Denial There it winning. is. Denial takes that game. Another timer ending. Oh my gosh. It's just, it's, this match has been one of the most, I would say, record-breaking <laughs> in the history of Guild Warriors. Denial versus, uh, versus Nonstop Nonsense. So evenly matched. Look at that. It's 12, it's, it's 12 points <laughs> in victory, Sean. Hey, insane, considering the first game was a four-point victory loss. I think this is the longest amount of time that three games have gone, uh, almost in the history of Guild Wars 2. You're absolutely right. I mean, going back into analysis of this game, there's just so much to say. Blue, <laughs> t you've been taking notes, man. Yeah, let's, let's go over to Blue and see what he has to say about those games. So the first thing I noticed initially, at least comparatively to, to the first game, is we saw Denial definitely was more ready, I would say, for Guts and those sort of sidecaps that he was trying to go for this game. 
Uh, they were definitely like sort of waiting for him a lot more, sort of keeping their eye out for him as well. And that was one of the first things I noticed. Uh, the second thing that I picked out that I thought was pretty interesting was that blue team actually, uh, not stop nonsense rather, they like didn't initially go for the trev. They would actually like save it and then go for it at a later point. Sean, what do you think like was going on with that? Like what was the thought process behind just waiting to use the trev for the right time? I'm really not too sure. So like in the beginning, what we saw is Hell says jump immediately on their trebuchet. Instead of Guts going on his, he rushed them, tried to take out their treb, eliminated that, and then went back to get on his. Like they would only treb if the other team didn't have their treb available. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, um, one thing I want to talk about is Guts's build. Like yeah, he did so much cleave damage due to pistol whip when he was running uh sword pistol which is not something we see too often i'm that's that's probably the first time i've seen that build played probably i would say a few months at least at least one that was mainly focused on uh, on that weapon set there you really do not see uh pistol whip being utilized that much in competitive gameplay uh as of recent so it's very interesting to see that come back into play here there's a lot of stuff that we've seen here today that we haven't seen in quite some time yeah, it's, it's definitely been really interesting. I really like that. The cleave from Pistol Whip, the damage from Pistol Whip uh, is really, really strong um, when you combine it with everything else. So I thought Guts was making really good plays with that. Uh, definitely something interesting, I thought, uh, from those games. All right, guys, I think we're ready to, to move on from this because right now we're going to be moving on to actually an interview with some arena developers we've got three of arena's uh, pvp developers on the line waiting for us but we're going to come back to that after a very quick commercial break so guys don't don't go away stay here tell your friends we're bringing on anet we'll see you right after this